convert or get hurt. People are suddenly talking about um, people in prison being forced to convert to the Muslim faith. It's now seen as an issue. Like I said, people are talking about it. They're 20 years too late to the party. No one's, you know, no one's being honest and upfront. This has been happening for years. Here's the problem. Yeah, dispersal prisons, long-term prisons in a high security estate, if Franklin's White Moors, Full Suttons. Yeah. They're talking about prison gangs. You know, you, you turn up to one of these prisons, uh, you go in your cell, there's a Quran on the bed. Yeah, I know a lad. I think it was about 2005, 2006. He was on accumulated visits. Now, accumulated visits, that's he was living a long way from his home in prison. His family couldn't travel or it's expensive. So you save up your visits. He came to Strange Ways, where I worked for a month, and he pretty much had a visit every day with his family, accumulated visits. He would then go back to his prison. It was Franklin at that time. He registered as a Muslim prisoner. So it was a friendly conversation. I just said, you know, what's going on there? He says, can I have a word in private, Mr. Samworth? He says, of course you can. He says, Mr. Samworth, I've got 10 years to do. Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble. I want to get out. You are under pressure from the minute you land in that prison to join what's seen as the biggest gang. He says, I can fight. He says, but I can't fight everyone. And I can't do me sentence down the segregation unit in solitary because if you fight the system you're going to get segregated possibly moved to another prison you can't fight everyone he said when i was at strange ways we had a number of lads on our cat a unit yeah high security not all them lads were cat a prisoners but all them lads had come from the dispersal system, long-term prisons, they were fighters, yeah? They were seen as trouble causers, because they'd gone, no, I'm not joining your gang, you know? I'm, I'm independent, me. I'm not gonna change my religion, if I've got a religion. I'm not interested. They were seen as troublesome. And we had, we ended up with a, a fair few infamous ones, on our cat a unit how strange that somebody who says no i'm not going along with that i'm not going to convert uh, i'm going to fight against you and stand alone is seen as troublesome so the people who are talking about this problem of people being forced to convert in prison what they're not realizing they, they, they talk about chaplains they're talking about prison governors and talking about staff firstly everyone is entitled it's a right to religion in prison so when you first land in prison within 24 hours you should be seen by a chaplain or someone relative to your faith in some cases they might not be available but you will be visited by somebody who comes under that umbrella and what they're saying is People should be inquiring. For instance, if someone was a Catholic and they've landed in your prison and you're visiting them as a chaplain and they say that they want to become or they are now a Muslim, then you should be asking them why. What is that going to do? Yeah, prison governors. Lads I worked with who were on detached duty years ago, yeah, 15 years ago from Whitemore, said it was a massive problem then. So you imagine, you go into a prison wing, you're outnumbered all the time as a prison officer. Yeah, but if you had dynamic security staff prisoner relationships, that makes it a safer place. But imagine you're at Whitemore, yeah? And there's wings that are literally, predominantly Muslim prisoners. And people are saying prison gang, so let's say it's a gang, yeah? 
as officers, what are you going to do? And Whitemore then had experienced staff. Now, every prison in the system has got very young, inexperienced staff. It can be a very, very intimidating job. Now, it'll be extremely intimidating. Threats of violence. You know, you're on a landing. You'll never understand this if you've not been in that job. You're on a landing. So, I'm on a wing. I don't know in my prison because it's that different. My wing, I know everyone. I'm on a wing, I don't know. I go to somebody's door. Yeah, I'm working on that wing. At the minute, the lads are locked up. I go to his door. Get me this. No, I can't do that. You're fucking dead when I get out. When I get out on this landing, you're fucking dead. You sell, mate. Yeah, you're dead, you mate. So then, half an hour later, you're unlocking the landing. These lads come out and they're eyeballing you. Intimidating job, very intimidating. Imagine all the wing. I've been in that situation. I've been stood on a landing with somebody on a wing in a private sector and I've been told to get off the wing. It was my wing, it's where I worked. Get off the wing now. What do you do? Yeah? Fight or flight or freeze. Very, very intimidating job. That was a private sector. Now, inexperienced everywhere, inexperienced governors. There's no turning a blind eye, just what are you going to do about it? Eh? If your prison, say, is 60% Muslim, yeah, you know you've got a problem, you know people are under pressure to convert. Some people won't be under pressure. Imagine you've been through the care system, you've been battered, kicked from pillar to post, yeah, in and out of prison all your life. You know, you're very much against the system. Then you land in a prison. And people are going to welcome you with open arms into their gang, yeah? You've got the greater numbers, you've got protection. You see where I'm coming from? It is a really big issue. It's been going on for years. It is established. We don't have the staff numbers, the staff experience, the management experience to tackle this. And I'll tell you now, I work with a couple of imams and they're not all bad, but one in the private sector was arrested by the police and he had 50 SIM cards on him, 50 SIM cards fully loaded with money, no numbers. No charges against him. He got off with that. So a prison taking 50 SIM cards fully loaded with cash. They didn't do anything. The imam, at strange ways, I knew him. He was from my neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, I'm not too so say too much because, he, you know, he was an all right lad. But he tried to challenge the system. He had lads who were on Ramadan who were fighting, drinking and smoking. They were going to serve you in the day and taking meals. And then he stopped their food at night. White people would get Ramadan packs. They took it to court. They got big compo. Yeah. So as he saw it, you know, they weren't complying with the system. He took them off Ramadan. They got big, massive payout. He gave up him. He just went along with it. A lot of the time he was too scared to say anything it's an established problem now prison don't have the staff they don't have the management or anything else to tackle it i'm just going to leave it there guys um it's not a difficult subject to talk about it's a very real thing however for the people in there the staff the young staff the inexperienced staff in dispersal prisons where they have these large communities Justice, gangs, whatever you want to call it. Tough gig. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. I'll see you there.